Spine Unity can now use keyed bounding box attachments. Well, some people might be wondering what the heck is a bounding box attachment. Uh, so the first thing this video is going to show is what is a bounding box attachment. Uh, so to show this, uh, I'm going to create some bounding boxes uh, on my soldier test character. And I'm going to do that inside of uh, a new slot I'm going to create at the same level as my weapons because I want my sword to be able to hit things and that's kind of what bounding box attachments are for. Uh, so underneath the weapon bone, I'm going to create a new slot and call it weapon hitbox and create a new bounding box attachment. I'm going to call this one, uh, let's just call it stab. Uh, and I'm going to create a bounding box that is kind of representing the tip of the sword. And I'm going to create another new bounding box uh, and call it Slice. And this one is going to kind of represent, uh, say, the cutting edge of the sword uh, if the sword were swinging downward. Uh, and then I'm going to disable all of these because in the setup pose I do not want them I do not want them to be active, so you can't just walk into something and stab it. Uh, so I'm going to jump over to animations, uh, and I've got a couple of attack animations to work on here. So scrubbing across this, it's a very short one, and I'm going to pick a frame where the sword starts beginning to look dangerous, say frame one, uh, and I'm going to activate the stab bounding box, and I'm going to disable it at the end of the animation. So now, this attachment, or bounding box attachment, is only active during those frames. I'm going to rip through and do the, uh, the rest of these real quick. So that's about where it should start hurting. Choose slice, and disable it at the end. I'm actually going to move this back one frame, just in case. And one more animation. Let's see, right about there. And right about there. Okay. So now, uh, all my export settings are still correct, uh, so I'm just going to hit the export button. And my project should now be in Unity. Oops, I meant to delete that first. Uh, and if you look in the inspector and you play back something like the attack animation, you'll notice uh, if we slow that down a little bit, that there is a wireframe of the bounding box attachment, so you can prove to make sure those are actually working. There we go. Cool. Looks like we're good. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is spawn an instance of my skeleton, and I'm going to add a child object I'm going to name this Weapon Hitbox. Uh, the name is not important, but it's kind of nice to have it all attached. Uh, and I'm going to add the Bounding Box Follower script uh, to uh, this game object. And I'm going to choose the slot that I want to follow. Uh, in this case, I'm going to choose Weapon Hitbox, and you'll notice that it only allows you to select slots that currently have a bounding box attached to them. So it's a pretty good practice to isolate your bounding box usage to either their own slots or where you really, really want them. Uh, not mix and matching graphical components uh, and uh, bounding box components. Uh, so under attachments names, attachment names, now we have uh, slice and stab. And uh, we can toggle those on and off just kind of like a debug. Let's see what they look like. Uh, these are actually Polygon Collider 2D objects, and they are attached to this game object. However, I've chosen to uh, use their uh, Hide in Inspector property 
to prevent them from causing graphical glitches uh, when the inspector updates. Uh, that's about all you need to know about them. They are present, they're just not visible. Uh, and you'll also notice that these are not aligned uh, with the sword. That's because the script does not align it with the bone. This script aligns uh, the state of the bounding boxes with the spine skeleton state of the bounding boxes. Uh, it quickly generated a button here called Add Bone Follower, which I'm going to click. Uh, and now, uh, it read the slot that was attached to the uh, bounding box follower's script, determined what bone it was supposed to follow based on that, uh, and then updated itself uh, to follow that particular bone. So now our Polygon Collider 2Ds are aligned uh, with the sword. So the next thing I'm going to do is give myself something to stab. So I'm going to bring in another character, or another skeleton called Woodman, and put him right in front of the soldier. Bring him a little closer, flip him around. I'm going to give him a box collider 2D, and kind of scale it around his body a little bit. Uh, maybe push him into the background so we can always see the sword. And whatever, give him the idle animation. Let's see. And I'm also going to add a rigid body 2D to him and set him to is kinematic uh, so that he doesn't just fall off the face of the earth. So now uh, I've got my scene kind of set up the way I want it. I want to create a controller uh, for the foot soldier. So I've already created a scripts folder, so I'm going to create a new script called Foot Soldier. Reload all that stuff. And what does Foot Soldier have? He's got an idle animation, and he's got a few attack animations. I'm going to add my Fine animation attribute in there, so we get the easy drop downs. Uh, he's also got a skeleton animation object that we can get on start really easily, like that. And then I want to make sure we start uh, the idle animation right off the bat. So I'm going to use a set animation and then choose idle animation and set it to loop. We get our nice looping state right off the bat. And we also want to make the soldier, you know, do an attack when we click a button or something. So I'm going to check get button down fire one, something like that. And now we need to make the soldier swing his sword and then maybe return to his idle state uh, as soon as he's done. So choose scale in him. That state that set animation. Let's make this clean. Uh, attack in him. Excuse me. Uh, will be attack NMs, and then we need to pick a random one in the middle. So random dot range zero to attack NMs dot length. And now we set the animation to track zero to the attack enemy selected. I, mean, I don't want this one to loop because I want it to go from the attack back to the idle animation after a while. And I'm going to use the uh, state.addAnimation function uh, to queue up the idle animation afterwards. And this one I will set to loop. Uh, but I'm also going to give it a delay of about a half a second so we can make sure that we get to the end of the animation and kind of let the sword sit there for a while. Okay, so now we should be able to jump back into Unity uh, and add the foot soldier script to the foot soldier. And so we get a drop down for the idle animation. Choose the idle. Under attack animations, and I have three, so I'm going to create an array of three. Add the attack animations, and we should be pretty good. Uh, so every time I click, I should get 
a fairly randomly selected, there it is, uh, animation. Uh, and if I slow down uh, the skeleton animation and we get an attack, you should see with the foot soldier selected that the box shows up only during the attack. Hmm, looks like that one might be broken. Should mix itself back to idle. Stab. And mix back to idle. Looks like it's working. Maybe there's an overlap issue. That's okay though. Looks like it's working well enough for our purposes. And we have the time scale at one, and now uh, I know what everybody wants to see is how this interacts with the woodman. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is create a script called sword, and I'm going to add it to my weapon hitbox. Oops. Like that. is. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do is do the standard Unity thing on trigger enter 2D uh, collider 2D collider. Uh, we'll check to see hit and make sure we're actually hitting the collider. Should we, so we should see during each one of these attacks we've hit the woodman. Like that. Uh, so now, uh, now that we have the actual collider, I want to send it a message. Uh, but I'm actually going to send it a message of which uh, bounding box collider, which bounding box attachment was used to hit the woodman. So we can tell if it was a stab or a slash. And the right way to do this, uh, using the bounding box follower script, uh, is to first get a reference to the bounding box follower. Uh, I tend to do this on start. That's so you know it's on the same object. Uh, and now uh, I can send the collider message. Collider dot um, send message hit, and I'm going to pass it follower dot current attachment name. I could send it the attachment reference itself. This is the actual reference to the bounding box follower. I could send it the actual polygon collider 2D, uh, but I'm choosing to send the current attachment name because this is what cl most closely aligns itself with the way Spine uh, deals with things like skins and swapped, um, swapped attachments based on which skin is currently loaded. Uh, the current attachment uh, dot name property would not give you the same thing as current attachment name if the skin placeholder uh, was named differently than the attachment. So I feel it's it's more referential to usually use the current attachment name when trying to determine which uh, attachment actually did something. So I'm going to pass that uh, and send that message over. And we can actually add one more thing here, which is the don't require receiver. So if we hit something that doesn't understand what hit means, it won't bark at us. Uh, so now that that's working, we need to add one more script, and that is a script for the woodman to do something when he gets hit. Uh, so I'm going to create a new script oops, called woodman. And I'm going to attach that to the woodman. Reload everything in Studio again. Uh, and what does woodman have? He has an animation called hit animation, and this is a spine animation, so I'm going to do that. And he also has a skeleton animation, so we're going to do that. Do the initialization thing again. Uh, and we don't need an update for him, uh, but what we do need is a hit, and then... There we go. A parameter for what hit him. Uh, so now we can do some cool stuff like if attachment name equals stab 
Ouch, I got stabbed. Else if attachment name equals slice. Uh, what, just ouch my bark and whatever. Uh, so now we can go back into Unity. Oh, wait, we forgot one thing. Might as well use the animation. Scalinm dot state dot set animation track zero hit anim uh, do not loop. So now we should get a nice uh, impact effect whenever the sword actually strikes that body. And we also need to make sure we assign the animation or it won't do anything. I'm actually going to save my scene in case something goes horribly wrong. play. Bam. There we go. Ouch, I got stabbed. Ouch, I got stabbed. Ouch, my bark. You got sliced. And there you go. That's pretty much it. So this is a very basic uh, bounding box usage um, implemented very quickly uh, using the bounding box follower script uh, and the bone follower script. Uh, for people that are used to using skeleton utility, uh, there is no reason that you can't do that as well. Just do not add a bone follower. Uh, make your skeleton utility hierarchy there and attach the bounding box follower to the child bone of your choice. Uh, hope everybody has fun with this one. See ya. Oh, wait, forgot. Thank you, Farron, again, for both pair coding uh, and drawing this ridiculously cool logo based on me. Uh, I'm flattered. See ya.